the three-point shot. They do have a timeout. Decide not to use it. Curry, way down to ten. Oh, what a shot from Curry! Has been the focal point of the Warriors' offense ever since the inception of the dynasty when the greatest shooter of all time was introduced to the NBA's most accurate shooter of all time. That was over 10 years ago. This season, the greatest offense in NBA history meets one of the best offensive coaches in today's NBA. Hey, what's happening, everyone? This is Switch Culture. The Warriors will try to replicate what they did back when they shocked the league with the motion offense. The Terry Stotts and Steve Kerr offense in combination with Jay Stackhouse results in what I'd like to call the 3 and D. A motion offense that plays four out shooting and a focus on getting back on D. So far, it has worked to perfection, shocking the likes of Mike Brown into submission. Twice. While the team is still experimenting on player combos, Steve Kerr highlighted that he's got 12 players and he'll only be able to play 10. Today's video will take a look at this new offense, how each player fits, and who will likely be the four guys left out of the rotation. At this rate, I'm not even sure how the two-way players will find minutes, and considering what we've seen from Post, he's going to have a rough year at the end of one of the toughest and grittiest rosters in the NBA this season. With so many players vying for spots, it's an absolute dogfight in the gym at every practice, because come opening night, there will only be two options. Either your name gets called, or it doesn't. So, who will it be? To find out the details on this new offense and which players will be in or out of the rotation, be sure to watch the whole video. Before that, however, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to Swish Culture for the most analytical and entertaining NBA content on the planet. Now get ready. You're about to get The addition of former Trailblazers head coach Terry Stotts has mostly flown under the radar. That is, until you see the Warriors' playstyle has some significant new additions and somewhat of a new take on a few pre-existing concepts. For the last couple of years, the Warriors had relied on assistant coach Kenny Atkinson to fill the void left by former assistant Mike Brown. Brown was a defensive specialist who helped the Warriors navigate the less popular end of the floor, keeping players engaged and allowing the offense to flow through its defenders. This allowed the Warriors to rank at or near the top of the league in both offense and defense year after year, leading to multiple championships. Once Brown left, it became quite obvious how important his role was to the team's success. Through a number of coaching staff changes, Stotts and Stackhouse now stand next to Kerr with one singular goal in mind, and that is to reinvent the Golden State Warriors in ways that Kerr had never imagined. There are currently three overarching concepts that we're seeing with this team that is going to allow them the opportunity to maximize their success. Throughout the preseason games, these have been quite obvious and really make it explicit what the team had been lacking in the last couple of years. The first of those concepts is pace. In prior years, the Warriors had been one of the league leaders in pace. With Mike Brown's recipe for turning defense into offense, they had the perfect tool in Draymond Green, an elite defender to get stops push the pace, and then drive the offense through Stephen Curry. With both Steph and Klay Thompson at the wings, the transition three became a thing. But it didn't stop there. Since teams weren't put on to Stephen Curry just yet, all he had to do was pass it to Steph and everyone knows, three points are better than two. The fact that the league's second best shooter at the time was across from Steph made this a deadly combo. This meant that Steph Curry could become the perfect decoy, and thus was born the motion offense. Once teams figured out how dangerous Steph Curry was, his movements became crucial to the success of his teammates and effectively the team. This off-ball movement and being the decoy allowed Klay Thompson to flourish. He would punish teams for overcommitting to Steph, as this was considered rather disrespectful to the incredible shooter that was Klay Thompson. But we're still not done. Once teams realized that they had to contend with two of the greatest shooters to have ever lived in the same backcourt, they completely gave up on guarding Draymond Green as they realized the same thing he did a long time ago. Three points are indeed better than two. So they would easily give up two points to Draymond rather than let the Warriors get the possibility of Steph or Clay getting an open look. Because at this point, either one or the other could start to cook. But this in and of itself was a dangerous game. 
This deadly triangle of Steph, Clay, and Dre forced teams out to the perimeter, allowing Draymond to play the forward position with zero post moves. Offensively, all Draymond needed was to be able to make layups, as he would always be rewarded with a wide-open drive to the basket on fake handoffs that would keep opponents guessing. But in the minds of the opposition, they were winning, as long as they kept Steph or Clay from getting hot. Fast forward to the current Warriors team, and something's missing. As a matter of fact, something has been missing for a few years. The deadly tandem was mostly a shell of its former self. Clay Thompson's shooting had declined, and is now no longer a part of the Warriors. Draymond has lost a couple of steps, and his athleticism is through the floor. All the Warriors really have left in terms of star power is Steph Curry, but considering the entire reason the motion offense was successful was due to the chef, that's all they need to build around him. While Draymond is no longer athletic, he still functions as a high IQ passing forward that is still one of the best defenders in the league. These two cornerstones give the Warriors enough to work with, and for the past couple of years, Kerr has been trying to plug players in as replacements in order to try and replicate that same success. James Wiseman for Andrew Bogut, Andrew Wiggins for Kevin Durant, Jonathan Kaminga for Draymond, and now Brandon Pajemski for Klay Thompson. But the truth is, that strategy couldn't have been any worse, and it couldn't have been any more obvious than after Mike Brown's departure. This is where Terry Stotts and the second concept comes in. Player Agency and Terry Stotts System for a few years, the comparisons of Steph Curry and Damian Lillard raged on. I myself even made a video comparing the two, which, after watching, the gap between the two would make Michael Strahan jealous. There was a reason why such discourse even developed, however. That reason was Terry Stotts. Stotts was the head coach of the Portland Trailblazers for an entire decade, from my birthday on August 7th of 2012, all the way to June 4th of 2021. During these years, he deployed a coaching formula that led the Blazers to eight playoff appearances starting in his second year as head coach. His development and coaching style, a complete and total counter to Steve Kerr's approach, saw Dame time rise through the ranks to being mentioned in these same discussions as Stephen Curry. The success of Damian Lillard and his ascension to stardom may not have reached the echelons it did were it not for Stotts. While Steve Kerr's approach was to plug players in to fit the mold that had been a successful championship formula in prior years, Terry Stotts takes players and tries to utilize their best traits that are most likely to give them success. Instead of trying to find replacements or fit his team into a mold, he allows the players to mold themselves into a team. This is what makes Terry Stotts a game changer for the Warriors. This is the first major building block for the Warriors' new offense. So, how did the Warriors come by such an incredible assistant coach? The Blazers thought there was greener grass, but Dame knew better. The team gave up on Stotts and brought in Chauncey Billups. That was the death knell for Rip City. The Blazers haven't seen a postseason since, and once Dame departed from Portland two years later, he and Stotts would be reunited in Milwaukee, who had just recently joined the team as an assistant coach three months prior. This reunion would be short-lived, however, as the Bucks' head coach at the time, Adrian Griffin, got a bit too disrespectful, which caused Stotts to resign from the team less than a month later before the start of the regular season. With Stott's coaching style and Steve's motion offense, we've heard Steve Kerr saying it. You know, we believe in ball movement. I mean, when you play the Warriors, you know the ball is going to move, and that's not going to change. But we also have to adapt to our personnel, you know. So um, I think where I can do better is simplifying some of the, the actions that we run so that the, the players know exactly what they're doing. So finding that, that balance where we can maintain our identity but, but simplify things and, and make it a little cleaner, that's, that's the challenge. Jonathan Kaminga saying it. Uh, all the time I've been working on my threes. Pod saying it. The three-point line is such a you know, weapon in today's game. I knew that it was uh, something I needed to really focus on in the offseason, and that's what you know, Steve and Mike said. It's all about ball movement and letting players take those open looks from three that they're comfortable with. Everyone from one through four, that is, from Steph Curry to Draymond Green, have the light to take the shot if they're open. When the Warriors play with Looney or Trace, this is a four-out offense. But when the Warriors play small ball, this becomes a true five-out offense where every player is a threat to score. This is a key element from Stotts to ensure opponents know that every player means business. 
This maximizes a team that isn't top heavy or doesn't have an imbalance of star power by allowing each player the freedom to be the best versions of themselves as players and see how the team better fits together. As opposed to selecting specific skill sets and trying to plug them into lineups, we see this being executed in the preseason with a different lineup to start every single game and multiple permutations throughout each quarter. This allows the Warriors to mine fit and matchup data, which explains why the team has yet to determine its starting five. This forces each player to fall into a more natural role, and depending on how they complement their teammates, this will in turn drive what role they will play with the team. Think of it like forming crystals. Steph and Dre are the catalysts. They are the known talents of the team. The task then is to find the three players that complement these two best in a starting role, followed by the five bench players that can provide the best backup minutes without either of Curry or Green present. The final of these concepts is the focus on team defense to tie everything together. This is where defensive coach Jerry Stackhouse comes in. The Warriors knew how important defense was to winning championships, but without someone to hold the players accountable, that sort of fell by the wayside. I mean, our, our transition defense fell off the map last year. A huge emphasis in camp will, will be to shore that up. The signing of Gary Payton II and the championship in 2022 is the perfect example of how important it is to get stops. With Draymond quarterbacking, Wiggins and Payton guarding the POA and Looney protecting the paint with incredible rebounding, it became hard for opponents to score on their first attempt and almost impossible on the second opportunity since there weren't many of those. This served as proof that despite lacking in offense, as long as players bought in defensively, they could still win a championship. The following two years saw the Warriors drop to 14th and 15th respectively in defensive ratings. For perspective, the Warriors ranked second in defensive efficiency in 2022 behind only the Boston Celtics, the last year Mike Brown was the Warriors' assistant coach. With Stackhouse newly recruited to the team, we see drastic improvements over last season. His ability to connect with the players is quite obvious, and it also helps that almost everyone is vying for a starting role with the team. Players are getting back on defense, and there's more cohesion and communication on that end of the floor. Instead of guys roaming and getting lost, we now see intention in their movements and positioning. Take this one particular clip. Now this looks like bad defense on the part of Jonathan Kaminga, whose closeout angle allows Terrence Mann off the Clippers to drive straight to the basket and get an up and under. He was called out on social media for it, however. That was intentional. In the matchup versus Sacramento, we see Moses Moody close out this was intentional. Unfortunately for him, it didn't work as intended, as Mann had the skill to finish with a very difficult shot. Eight times out of ten, the offensive player won't finish that play or isn't athletic enough to do so. The intention was, as you see in Moody's case, to drive the offensive player into the paint, right into the shot-blocking big who's playing drop D. With Trace's ability to block shots, something he's quite good at, this feeds him players who have a very narrow angle to the rim. All Trace has to do is go up and get an easy block. And this is what ties everything the Warriors are doing for the team to piece together what could be one of the most ridiculous runs to an NBA championship. While the preseason wins are nice, seeing what Golden State is doing, knowing the thought behind it, and to still watch them walk away with the W is quite impressive. Keep in mind, they're still missing one important piece that's still loading. Lastly, with only 10 rotation spots, Steve Kerr will have to make a decision on which players to sit. Steph and Dre are locked for starting, and our three new signings in Melton, Anderson, and Heald are locked in the rotation as well. Pods and JK were not being offered in trades this offseason, and Steve Kerr just said Moody is a rotation player. Wiggins isn't back, but likely a starter and a rotation player at his worst. That leaves TJD, GP2, Waters 3, Loon, and Santos. Only one of these players makes the 10-man rotation. With Dre doubling as a center, but not being able to play the role full-time, this means the 10th man has to be either Loon or Trace. While Slow Mo can play the 5 and will do so in stretches, it's hard to see Trace not get minutes. Not to mention, when he's playing the 5, he's that anchor and the only player that the Warriors have that can protect the rim. That means Gary, Loon, Lindy, and Guy are likely your non-rotation players. I could be wrong, however, so why don't you guys let me know in the comments who you think will be left out. Do you think this new offensive strategy by the Warriors gives them a better chance to win a championship than the last couple of years? How far do you think this team can go without signing any additional players? Lastly, what impressed you the most so far? Both Moses Moody and Jonathan Kaminga had really strong showings recently, and it looks like Kerr will have a hard time keeping either out of the starting lineup. 
These guys need to be fed minutes until they hit their ceiling because as far as I'm concerned, both players have the ability to become stars in this league. But alas, I am not the be-all end-all voice on the Warriors championship capability. Let me know what you guys think. Post your thoughts in the comments below. Before that, however, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on all your notifications so you don't miss any of my latest uploads. Thanks for watching. Till next time, swish.